94. What is the molar solubility of CaF2 in a 0.100 molar solution of HF? And then they tell us that the Ka for HF is 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, so at least they gave us the Ka for hydrofluoric acid, which is HF. We're going to use that in a little bit. However, they're looking for the molar solubility of a different compound, calcium fluoride. Whenever we're talking about molar solubility, that just means that we're in a saturated solution and solubility, saturated solutions, that has to do with KSP values. So I did have to go into the back of the book to find out what the KSP value was for CAF2. And in this case, it's 4.0 times 10 to the negative 11th. Now, in order to find out how we're going to use these two K values, right, a Ka and a Ksp, let's just write the balance equations for each. So let's start with the HF. So since we have a Ka value, that means we're starting off with the acid and we're just breaking it down. So in this case, we have HF, and this comes to equilibrium because it does have a Ka value with H plus and F minus. Okay. And they're all um, aqueous here, right? Weak acids, they're aqueous. So they'll be in the Ka expression. H plus, that's aqueous. F minus, that's also aqueous. Everything's balanced for here. And now let me just maybe write that the Ka value for this is 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now let's write the Ksp equation for CaF2. Ksps, you start with the compound and you break it into its ions. So we have CaF2. Now that's a solid. This comes to equilibrium with its dissolved um, ions. In this case, there's two of them, right? Calcium and fluorine. A lot of different ways to find out the charges, right? Calcium's in group two on the periodic table, so that's always a plus two. And fluorine, minus one, right? You could also use your subscripts here as well, and you can crisscross them to get those charges. Now, they're uh, charges, so they're aqueous. And maybe I'll just bring this over here. Okay, and let's just maybe erase this and pull this up. Now, how are we going to use both of these equations? Well, we have to find something that's in common. What is in common between these balance equations? Now, before we do that, let's just make sure that the last one was balanced. Maybe some of you might have caught it, right? You have two fluorines on this side, so I just have to quickly put a two in front of the F. Now we're, now we're good. Now I still say to myself, what is the similarity between these two um, balanced equations? Yeah, they both have a F minus. And maybe I'll just get rid of this minus one. F minus, F minus one, it's the same thing. So they both have an F minus. So, if they gave me more information about HF, right, they told me that I was in a 0.1 molarity solution of HF, I can use that information to find out the F minus and then plug it in to the second equation. So it's kind of like a piggyback um, information, you know, uh, question here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down the calcium one first because we don't really need that yet. And we're just gonna work with this one. Now, we did start with 0 0.100 molarity. And remember, if we started with that, this is telling me that this is the initial solution. And if you're an initial solution, you know what to do. We have to do an ice table. Everyone's favorite. We've done about maybe 300 by now. ICE. Initially, we have that 0 0.100 molarity of the HF. So let's go in here, 0 0.100. It did not say that we had any initial H plus or F minus, so I have to assume that it's zero. C stands for change. You could only go up from zero. So on the zero side, I'm gonna plus, and on the other side, I'm gonna subtract. We don't know by how much, so that's why we use X values, right? And they're all a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio, so this would be minus x, plus x, and plus x. 
Equilibrium is just combining what you got here. So this would be 0 0.100 minus x. 0 plus x is just x. And 0 plus x is just x. These are the values that we're going to be using for our Ka expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this over here. And let's see. Ka equals something divided by something else, right? It's always products divided by reactants. So I have H plus times F minus divided by the concentration of F, HF in this case. So Ka is the 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. H plus was X, F minus was X, and HF is 0 0.100 minus X. But remember, we like to assume first. So what I'm going to say is I don't want to have this minus X with this value. Since this is a, a, a kind of small number, maybe we could get away with just saying that if we started off with all of HF, and since the Ka is a small number, we might end with mostly uh, HF. So that minus X might not be a lot. So we could assume that maybe it's, you know, such a small number that it's just going to be 0.1. We're going to do the 5% rule at the end just to see if we could assume correctly. Now let's see. 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth equals... We have x times x divided by 0 0.100. Cool. Let's, what is going on here? Let's cross multiply this times this, right? x times x is just x squared, right? So I'm going to say 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth, that's 6.4 times 10 to the negative 4 times 0 0.1 equals x squared. And now all we have to do is just take the square root because we want to get x by itself. So I have x equals, let's see, square root of 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth is 0 0.008 molarity. Now let's just see if we can assume correctly. This is an 8. What you're going to do is you're going to take your value and divide it by your initial, which in this case was 0 0.100. And we're going to multiply by 100. If this answer is 5 or less, we'll call this maybe the 5% rule, and maybe I'll put that up here. Does it pass the 5% rule? Is it a check or is it an X? If it's a check, we can continue on with our X value. But if we can't, we have to go back and do the math with that minus x. So let's see. Drum roll, please. This divided by 0.8 times 100, or divided by 0.1. Oh, no. We get 8%. That's higher than 5. So it does not pass the 5% rule. So that means we got to do it again. <laughs> Don't you love it? Yeah. <laughs> So I'm just going to go back over here and I'm going to say we couldn't have assumed that. So I'm going to keep that minus X in there now. And maybe the only thing that's changed is now this is going to be the minus X. So now when we do our cross multiplication, we have to distribute. Because essentially what we're doing is 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth times 0 0.100 minus x, and this will equal x times x, which is x squared. If we distribute, we will get the 6.4, 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth minus 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth x, and this equals x squared. And the problem here is that you have an x value and you have an x squared. That's the quadratic equation. But remember, in order to use the quadratic equation, we got to bring all the values onto one side. 
So whether you want to bring this over to the left side or bring these two over to the right side, it does not matter. Um, the only thing, generally, I know a lot of students like to just leave it as x squared and not negative x squared. So I will pull these two over to the other side. So in essence, we're going to add the 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth x on both sides, and we're going to subtract 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth on both sides, right? So this would be, now let's see, if I actually just, maybe we'll put it up here. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna say we have x squared plus 6.4, times 10 to the negative fourth x minus 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And this all equals zero. And from here, we can get our a, b, and c value. Remember the a value is in front of the x squared. The b value is in front of the x. And the c value is in front, or actually it's not in front of anything, it's just the random number. So in this case, we have a a of 1, because there was no number here, it was just 1, right? We have a b of 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. It's the number in front of the x. Make sure that you're taking that sign into consideration, because for the c value, this is a negative. So I have to say c equals negative 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And now we're gonna use this into our quadratic equation, which is this right here. It's lovely. <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll squeeze it down here. But basically we're solving for x, right? Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, yeehaw. Let's plug it in. <laughs> and then we'll simplify as we go. So x equals this whole big division and it's negative b, so the b value is now a negative, negative 6.4 times 10, times 10 to the negative fourth, plus or minus, because there is potentially two answers here, we gotta find which one is the actual answer, the square root of b squared, so b squared was 6.4, again, times 10 to the negative fourth, that's gonna be squared, and maybe I'll put parentheses around this, minus four times the A times the C value. So I have my A of one and my C of negative 6.4, maybe I'll drag that out, drag this out, there we go, that's good enough. 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth, and this is all over two times a, and we did say that a was one. Now we just have to simplify this. So two times one is just two, so I can just get rid of this, right? I can basically do this whole thing under the radical all at once, right? So I could do 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth squared, minus four times one times a negative 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. So I'm gonna do it, you try it, and let's see if we get the same answer. So 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth, that's squared. And then I'm gonna minus four times one times a negative 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that looks good. I'm just gonna erase this. See, we're getting, we're getting simplified already. So this whole thing I got as a 2.564096 times 10 to the negative fourth. And now we're gonna do the square root. So I'm just gonna take that value, square root it, and I'm gonna leave as many decimals as I can. I'm just gonna get rid of all this. Okay. And this now becomes 0 0.0160128, let's just say. 
That should be good enough. Now, we have to figure out which one is going to give me the positive answer. Remember, at the end of the day, equilibrium, your X values, you can't have negative concentrations. You can only have positive. So if you're already starting off with a negative here, is a negative plus a value going to give you a positive or a negative? Or a negative minus this value will give you a positive or a negative. Remember, we only want the positive one. And if you said that the positive answer is going to be the right one, you're absolutely correct. If you did the negative, you would have seen that we um, would have gotten a negative here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add these together. Negative 6.4 times 10 to the negative fourth plus 0 0.0160128. And I get, let's see, I get 0 0.0153728, and now that's all divided by 2. And now we get x equals, so this divided by 2, I get 0 0.007. Six, eight, six, four. This is not the final answer, so actually maybe I'll put this in scientific notation. I'm just going to say that this is 7.6864 times 10 to the negative third. And that's molarity. Now remember, we were searching for the one, ooh, I don't like that color. <laughs> we were searching for the ion that is the same between the two Equations. Remember, the F minus is the one that's the same. So here we go. That was just X. So my fluoride ion is 7.6864 times 10 to the negative third. Molarity. And I'm going to use that information now to plug in for here. So pause the video if you need to. I'm just going to maybe erase this Ka value math over here because we don't need this anymore, because I'm going to put my new equation up top here. So just pause the video if you want to write it down. There you go. And now let's move this up. So since we now know that the fluoride ion concentration is 7.6864 times 10 to the negative third molarity, I'm going to plug it in to here. However, do not get tricked. Do not times it by two. It doesn't matter what the number is in the balanced equation. Whatever you got, that's what you got. So I have 7.6864 times 10 to the negative third molarity for the F minus. And now I don't know how much calcium I have. Well, I could just label it as, yeah, you got it, X. And then I'll use my KSP equation. So let's see. In this case, KSP equals concentration of Ca plus 2 times the concentration of F minus, but that has to be squared because there was a 2 coefficient in the front. KSP was what we found out in the back of the book, 4.0 times 10 to the negative 11th. CA is X, and this is 7.6864 times 10 to the negative 3. So let's see it out. 4.0 times 10 to the negative 11th equals, we got X times 7.6864 times 10 to the negative 3, and that's squared. So let's just square that out first. And I get a really long decimal. So maybe I'll just get rid of this. Actually, I'll just get rid of this. And I'll say 5.90807. That should be good enough. Times 10 to the negative fifth. And if I want to solve for x, I'll just divide by that number on both sides. So 5.90807 times 10 to the negative fifth. 5.90807 times 10 to the negative fifth. This cancels. 
And now we have x equals. So 4 times 10 to the negative 11th divided by 5.90807 times 10 to the negative 5th. And I guess 3 sig figs because this is a standard value. So let's just say 6.77. 6 6.77 times 10 to the negative 7th. Okay. And I'm just going to check the 5% the rule, but I think we're good here. I really hope. <laughs> okay, thank goodness. We're good. We're way, we're not even at 1%. And just know that this is molarity. Okay. Well, now they just wanted the molar solubility of calcium fluoride. Now keep in mind, even though calcium fluoride was not included in the KSP, you still have some concentration. And just think about it, you only have one CAF2. So I only found out one X. So the ratios match. So this would be the molar solubility. 6.77 times 10 to the negative seventh molarity of CAF2. And that is the answer. Whoo hoo, quadratic kills, but it's good that we're going over. It's good practice for algebra. Yeah? Okay. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to you all soon. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.